So the definitions that followed the Arrhenius acids and bases were the Bronsted-Lowry And the Bronsted-Lowry definitions were more inclusive, so they weren't limited to just substances that produced H plus and OH minus. The Bronsted-Lowry acid was defined as a substance that donates an H plus. to another, we're just going to say molecule. It may not be going to a molecule. It may be going to an uh, ionic compound or a polyatomic ion or something like that, but we're just going to say molecule so that we don't end up writing molecule slash ion slash ionic compound in our notes every time. And the Bronsted-Lowry base was defined as a substance that accepts the H plus from another molecule. So in this system we have like a give and take. We have two reactants one of them, the acid, is donating an H+, the other one is the base and it's accepting an H+. And we're going to look at three examples of this. The first example is HCl with water. And they react to produce H3O+, the hydronium polyatomic ion, and the chloride ion. So we already know from the Arrhenius system and from tasting our stomach acid when we throw up, we already know that HCl is an acid. If we use the Arrhenius method, we can see why it's an acid. And the way that you characterize something, or sorry, if we use the Bronsted-Lowry method, we can see why it's an acid. The way that you characterize something according to the Bronsted-Lowry method, is you look at what happens to the molecule over the course of the reaction. So HCl starts out as HCl, and in the end of the reaction, it's turned into a chloride ion, Cl-. And the water, it starts as H2O, and at the end of the reaction, it's turned into H3O+. In one of those processes, this one or this one, one of those processes involves the donation of an H+, one of them involves accepting an H+. If we look at this, we're going from HCl to Cl-. This thing has lost an H+. It's donating. It's getting rid of its hydrogen ion. And the water molecule, you can watch it, it adds an H+. It goes from H2 to H3, and it adds a plus charge. So this thing, this process, is the process of accepting an H plus ion. Because of that, HCl, the reactant, is the Bronsted-Lowry acid, and H2O is the base. Let's do another example. Ammonia, NH3, which we're unable to to characterize by the Arrhenius method because it doesn't dissociate at all. It reacts with water to produce ammonium, NH4+, and hydroxide, OH-. And again, what we want to do is follow these reactants through the reaction, see what they turn into. NH3, we can see, turns into NH4. NH3 is turning into NH4. It doesn't make sense to say NH3 is turning into OH. They don't have enough atoms in common. The water is turning into hydroxide. So now that we've identified the two paths, what we want to do is look at each path independently. Is this happening by donating or losing an H+, or is this happening by gaining an H+. In the first one, NH3 goes to NH4, You've added a hydrogen. That's an accepting process. It's taken in. It's gone from H3 to H4. It's gone from neutral to a plus charge, so it's added in or accepted an H+. And the other reaction, 
We've gone from H2O to OH minus. So you've lost a hydrogen and you've lost a positive charge. You've gone from neutral down to negative. So this is donating. Because this is the accepting process, the reactant NH3 is the base. And because this is the donating process, the reactant H2O is the acid. So I want you to notice a couple things before we do the last example. In all of these reactions, one reactant is the acid and the other is the base. Every time. You don't have an acid with an acid or a base with a base or an acid with nothing. It's always an acid and a base. So you're always going to have one process that's donating and one process that's accepting. One of each. And that is going to help you figure these out. The second thing I want you to notice is that water in the first reaction was a uh, Bronsted-Lowry base. In the second reaction, it was an acid. There are quite a few substances that can act as either acids or bases by the Bronsted-Lowry method. And in the third quarter, when we do a chapter on acids, we will talk about this with a whole lot more detail. But right now, I just wanted to point it out to you that it's not a mistake, um, that there are many substances that can serve as both. So our last example is going to be hydrogen phosphate, HPO4, 2 minus, with ammonium, NH4 plus. And they react together. Oh, no, I'm going to do this one differently. I'm going to tell you that this is the base. Hydrogen phosphate is the base, and ammonium is the acid. Because one thing, before, I, before we continue on with this, one thing that I want you to be able to do is look at a complete reaction like this, like that, and to be able to pick out of the two reactants which is the acid and which is the base. So to go through this process of following them and classifying them. The other thing I want you to be able to do is look at something like this, where I've given you two reactants and I tell you, this one is the base, this one is the acid. Now you tell me what the products are of this reaction. And so that's what we're going to do for our last example. So HPO4 2 minus, if I'm telling you it's the base, that means that it's going to be accepting an H plus. We're going to be adding an H plus to it. So we're going to go from HPO4 to H2. PO4, adding an H, and we're also going to add a plus charge. So we're going to go from 2 minus to just a minus, dihydrogen phosphate. And NH4 plus, because it's the acid, the acid is the thing that donates H plus. So we want to go from NH4 to NH3, we're losing one of the hydrogens, and we also want to lose a plus charge because we're donating an H plus. So this is going to go from a positively charged cation to neutral, ammonia. So your study questions for this section will be, because I'm not too concerned about the Arrhenius acids and bases, you know, that's more of just historical stuff. It's not really something that I, I'm going to test you on. I mean, it's definitely not something I'm going to test you on. I want you to focus on the Bronsted-Lowry definitions. So your study question will be, what is the difference between a Bronsted-Lowry acid and a Bronsted-Lowry base. And again, just one more time, I want you to be able to look at a full reaction with the reactants and the products and be able to identify the reactant that's the acid and the reactant that's the base. Knowing the definitions will help you be able to pick those out. And then also, your other study question will be, how do you predict the products of a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reaction. There is another classification of acids and bases. It's called the Lewis method, 
we will touch on the Lewis method very briefly in the spring quarter. And then that's really the focus of acid-base chemistry in organic. So that's where we really emphasize it. So don't